Hi guys, happy Thursday. It is Friday Eve, do the dance of joy. So excited that the weekend is almost here. I have, I have fun things going on this weekend, like not, I guess, I, I don't know. I might be a little bit different than other people, but I have kind of work things going on this, like I have some projects that I'm working on this weekend. Um, and I consider it work if it happens in this room. So <laughs> I have work things to do this weekend and then for some reason I'm really excited about <laughs> no. Oh gosh, hi guys, how is everybody? So uh, today's project is a good one. Who's excited? I am, we are making so fun. That was like the tense was all wrong there. <laughs> How excited I am. English words are hard. We're making something so fun today. I'm really excited to show these to you guys. We're going to make some tassel earrings. We're using some amazing Toho seed beads from Jesse James Beads. And we are using some Like It Hot, the Design Elements Mix. And you guys, it is this pink color that you guys always go crazy for. And it is so pretty. It's so pretty. I'm not normally a pink person, but there is something about like a hot pink that is just sassy and fun. And that's exactly how these earrings are. They are sassy and fun and just really, really pretty. It's a mix of beads from the mix and then a mix of the seed beads, which is what the tassels are made out of. There are so many different ways to make tassels. I'm going to show you just one of the many ways that you can make tassels with your seed beads. Um, so it's going to be interesting. And if you want to see a different kind of tassel, just side note, I'm gonna make more tassels tomorrow on Sarah Ellis Design. So it's all about tassels this week and seed beads. So this should be a fun one. And if we have time at the end, and I think we're going to, because I think that we'll be able to get through these earrings pretty quickly. I'm gonna show you guys a quick and easy ring that you can make with one of the beads from the Some Like It Hot. Hooray! Everybody loves rings, right? And what a fun way to use up like your extra beads or some that you like in particular, like the little rose. There are a couple of roses in this mix and they are just begging to be a ring. So hopefully we'll have time to do that. Um, shouldn't be a problem, shouldn't be a problem. I don't wanna leave that one out because that's, it's fun, it's fun. So we've got two projects in one today. Let's get to it. Good morning, everybody. So good to see everybody. Hi. I am having a really good morning. I hope you guys are too. It's, it's awfully early for some of you over on the West Coast, but here on the East Coast, the morning is in kind of full swing. We're, we're headed right into the weekend here soon, which just makes us even one step closer to the weekend. All right, so this is Some Like It Hot, right? How pretty is this? And just if you're curious, it's one of the ones that's on the card. So it's a little design elements mix, right? It comes in the little packaging that's attached to the card. Normally I unpackage it for you guys, but I already had it open and I thought, why well, put it back in the package? I'll just show it to you guys. It's so pretty. And one of my favorite things in here, and always one of my favorite things, is the little the little bubble balls with those gorgeous pink in them. Is that not awesome? Those are so fun. And there's always two of them, so you can make earrings out of these. Um, I don't know if you guys remember, Sarah was talking about the bubble balls and they make really, really good earrings and they make great necklaces but on short necklaces. If you put these on bracelets, if you're really hard on jewelry, that might not be the best idea because you can crack these open if you accidentally bump something too hard with your hands. So just keep that in mind. You don't want to accidentally break your bubble ball because, you know, you don't want all those pretty little crystals spilling out everywhere, right? but they, they do make the most beautiful jewelry ever. There are some gorgeous bohos in here. Love those. I like these little pillow shaped beads, right? They're kind of puffy and they have this really funky cool on them. Super awesome. And then of course, there are these roses that are amazing right? I love them. I love them. And I love that they are drilled so you can string them or they have a flat back. You can glue them down to something if you want to. You can wire wrap them, which is how we create this little ring that I have on. So 
a lot of different ways that you can use those. They're one of my one of my very very favorites. Some little leather tassels. I love those, and I love that dark dark pink color that is there. These guys are just stunning, right? They just have that whisper of pink to them, but they're all about the sparkle. So there you go. <laughs> I just think you can throw them across the room. That's so funny. Don't toss them across the room, <laughs> Sarah. <laughs> don't throw your bubble balls I'm serious you guys they are really really sturdy but I gotta tell you it's true if you are like one of those people who talks with your hands or are just really hard in general I've I've cracked more than two of these just from wearing them and like being as crazy as I possibly am but yeah they are super super sturdy it's not like it's just oh I dropped it and it's gonna break it's not like that at all I don't want it to sound like <laughs> I don't want you guys to think that I meant anything bad about these because they are super awesome and they are sturdy. Um, but if you're like me and crazy, then you definitely want to be careful where you place them, right? And you go slamming your hands down, you just never know what's going to happen. Okay, so that is not all as far as the beads are concerned. Let me show you. So you guys know there are seed beads over on the website as well these are perfectly pink it is one of the three tiered cb seed bead mixes and there are three perfectly pink shades to go with this and they are just super super pretty and you can see how well they mix right with the some like it hot yeah 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 so all about that um, but it does mean that we are going to have to bring in the ugly bead mat. <laughs> but but I've, I've, I cut it in half, so maybe it won't be all kinds of ugly. I just can't stand that color. Anyway, let me show you where we're going. So these are the tassel earrings that we're going to create. And I think they're so pretty and fun and a very different way to create tassels. You guys, that is bead string wire. So they're soft and flowy. They have the texture of the bead stringing wire. Okay, so they're not stiff like a piece of, um, you know, hard wire in there. Super, super pretty. So this is one, we're gonna make its mate and it's gonna go by pretty quickly. And then hopefully we'll be able to make this guy too, right? Katie says, where can we find pretty bead mats? You know what? I don't know. <laughs> I'm not real sure. I wish I knew. Wouldn't it be cool if we had some pretty Jesse James beads bead mats? That would be awesome. Has some with the little JJB logo on them. <laughs> That's a hint. <laughs> I've given out hints this morning. I, I better watch it. I am sassy today. I'm telling you, I'm in a mood. All right. <laughs> so for our... For our earrings, I am gonna dump out some of our seed beads and I'm not gonna let them commingle. I'm gonna have three little, <laughs> three little piles of my seed beads. I, it doesn't take very many. I know this looks like a lot of seed beads, but it's really funny how seed beads work because you use them and use them and use them and then you look back and it's like you never used any at all. It's like they, they reproduce <laughs> as you're working. It's really weird how seed beads can be like that. It only takes a few to get really, whoa, really beautiful jewelry. Now see, I was being sassy about the seed beads and they came back at me. Dumped all those out. That's way more than we're gonna need for sure. All right, let's pour out this last color. This is actually my favorite color out of the three seed beads. It's this really beautiful, almost magenta, but not quite. And it almost has like, it's on the side, on the purple side almost of pink, right? It's just really awesome. Okay, so this is super easy, you guys. I think you guys are really, really gonna like this because there are so many different things that you can do with these. So let me show you what the little individual strands of our tassel look like. So we're taking some of our bead stringing wire. We're gonna use some 19 strand beetle on bead stringing wire and I'm using silver color just in case you see the little tops, which 
you might they may be poking out just a tiny bit but really you don't see a whole lot of the bead stringing wire I'm using bead crimp or I'm sorry crimp beads instead of crimp tubes for this just because they're a little bit smaller which is different for me because I usually use tubes and so there's a crimp there and then there's a crimp at the bottom as well okay so if you've got a crimper tool that get it out and get it going because that's what we're going to do but that's basically all we're doing we're going to string up several of these you need 10 for one earring so it is a little time consuming but the results are so worth it and we're definitely not going to do 10 of these i figure we'll do two <laughs> we'll do two and then we'll put our earring together okay so let me just get you started on that so the bead along bead stringing wire i'm using um the silver color like i said so it's nice and pretty and it's going to tell you on the packaging what the corresponding sizes for your um, crimp beads or your crimp tubes is going to be so for the one that i'm using you're going to need size one crimps for this the crimp beads and let me dump some of these out so i normally use crimp tubes instead of crimp beads but sometimes in, in projects like this where the um the crimp bead i don't want it to be distracting i use the crimp bead instead of the tube just because it's a tiny tiny bit smaller right okay so you are going to cut yourself a small little section of the bead stringing wire and Give yourself enough to work with, but you don't wanna be wasteful, right, with your bead stringing wire. So my pieces are a little on the long side. You really only need about three and a half to four inches to work with. And the very first thing you wanna do is you wanna take one of those crimp beads and you wanna thread that on to the end of your bead stringing wire okay and then you want to take the end of your bead stringing wire and you want to make a loop and go back down through your crimp bead so you're making a little loop just like that okay now we want to cinch that up a little bit because we don't need a great big huge loop for this we want a small loop so i'm just going to use my fingers fingernails and push that crimp bead up close so that I have a very small loop here okay the smaller the loop the better for this project in particular not always true but for this project it is we want the loops to be really really small you also want to be sure that just like with any other crimping project that your bead stringing wire is not crossing over each other inside that crimp bead you want to be sure that it is running side by side inside there okay even though this is not going to be like a heavy piece where we're worried about um you know the longevity of a, a bracelet or a necklace you still want to be sure that you're crimping correctly in there just in case right just in case you don't want to pierce that bead stringing wire in the wrong way it matters on this end on the other end things are going to be a little bit different okay so you want to come in with your crimper tool notice on the top of the crimper tool there are two notches the macaroni notch that's the one that's shaped like a little piece of macaroni it's the one that's closest to the handle or on the back of the tool closest to your hand and then the round kind of oval shaped one is the one out here furthest out okay you want to start in that back notch the one that looks like macaroni you want to take your crimp bead and place it inside your crimper tool and then you just want to crimp so you just want to squeeze the tool shut okay that's going to crimp the next notch is not really doing anything other than just tidying up so you've got this little pinched bead okay and when you put it in that first notch you want to put it side to side instead of long ways okay and then you want to give it a squeeze all it's going to do is just squeeze that little macaroni shape together and make it more compact okay it's just going to tidy up your crimp just a tiny tiny bit so now we have a secure end and this little tail right here we don't need that we're going to come in with our cutter tool we're going to get as close to that crimp bead as we possibly can and trim that little tail off so that we just have our single strand to work with okay so 
Now we want to string on our seed beads. I'm gonna do 10 of each color and I want to start with the lightest and work my way to the darkest. So we're just gonna treat our bead stringing wire just like we would if, if it were a needle and just pick up your seed beads. So there's five of the light pink. I'm gonna do five more. Okay, so there's 10 of our light pink. And then we're gonna go up here to the other pink, which is just a little bit darker. We're gonna add 10 of those as well. <laughs> and there are five of those. And we'll do five more. <laughs> I'm sitting here like, just thinking to myself how <laughs> I was just so sassy. I regret being so sassy when we got started today. <laughs> you know, I'll play that whole scenario over in my mind over and over again a million times today and be like, why? Why? <laughs> All right, so last but not least, we're down to the darkest pink and we're going to thread 10 of those on. So there's five. I'm one of those people, it's crazy that I have, we'll do five more, that I have um, Facebook Lives in my life because I'm definitely one of those people, I know you guys have seen the meme, I'm not somebody you ever wanna put on speakerphone. <laughs> right, you just don't ever know what's gonna come out of my mouth. I'm usually, I usually have a pretty good filter and sometimes even with the filter, I'm just sassy, I'm just sassy. <laughs> Sassy vibes welcome. I like sassy Sarah says Wanda. <laughs> it's I don't know my energy is just it's good today. It's good today. It's it's because it's not raining. I'll be completely honest with you. Yesterday was just a dreary kind of gross day and today it's not super bright and sunny but it's much better weather than it was yesterday. We had storms last night. I'm feeling this summertime sunshine. Okay so putting on a crimp bead right at the end, okay? So we have 10 of each color. We've got 10 of the light, 10 of the medium, and 10 of the dark. So it kind of makes that ombre effect, which I think is so pretty. And when you do it in a big group like this, it looks so pretty together, right? Super, super beautiful. All those beads, the bead choices for the seed beads, all three, because there are a lot of different colorways for the seed beads, but all three tiers in each one of those seed bead mixes, they work so beautifully together, right? They are all in the same little family and make beautiful jewelry all together. So you definitely can keep them together and not feel like you need to separate them out. Okay, so I did put a crimp bead right on the end of that. And you can see I have more bead stringing wire than I need, right? I, um, just like to have a little bit extra, but you guys definitely don't need that much. Now, I'm gonna bring in the crimp tool. Actually, let's talk about it for just a second before we crimp, because we're crimping a single strand here. We're not crimping two strands. So we don't necessarily have to worry about having those strands separated within the crimp bead when we go to crimp it. If you wanted to, you could, and I, I don't necessarily condone this, but I'm just saying, if you wanted to, at this point, if somebody from Beetle on is watching, they're totally going to be mad at me. You could actually flatten this with your pliers, just a pair of pliers and flatten it, okay? Because you're not crimping a piece of moving jewelry, right? This is just a strand that is part of a tassel. However, you are still creating a opportunity to cut through the nylon coating that is on your bead stringing wire and you could have a crimp failure, okay? I don't necessarily condone that, but you could. You absolutely could do that and nobody is going to um, come after you. They might come after me, but they're not gonna come after you. Now, I make beetle lines sound like the mafia. They're totally not, I promise. <laughs> if you're gonna use your crimper tool though, okay? You only have one strand in there. Well, the crimper tool wants to separate the strands. There's not two strands to separate. So you're going to want your crimp bead to be to one side or the other. Does that make sense? So 
the best way to do this is place that crimp bead in that back notch on your crimper tool and then kind of look down at your bead as it is going inside the tool which is kind of difficult for me in the angle that i'm at hold on let me grab it okay and you just want to pull that bead stringing wire to one side okay so that that crimp that macaroni shape the middle of that does not come down on the middle of your bead stringing wire does that make sense you just don't want to you don't want to pinch that bead stringing wire in the middle so you can see now that you look at it how my bead stringing wire is on one side of the crimp instead of in the middle okay just a little thing like that that's going to make a difference because if you're squeezing down and that middle little tooth that creates that comes down right onto the middle of your bead string wire that single strand you definitely are creating a a possible cut right there that could be a crimp failure okay not making this hard i really don't want it to seem like it's hard it's just the little things like that that you need to pay attention to when you are working a project like this okay so same thing when we go to use that front notch to tidy it up you just want to put it in there sideways and give it a little pinch and clean it up nice and neat now we have a very small little crimp bead and i'm going to come in with my cutter tool and i'm going to trim the rest of the bead stringing wire that tail off right as close to that crimp bead as possible because if i have crimped correctly i don't have any reason to worry about cutting super super close okay so there you've got one strand ready to go you're going to need 10 of these for each earring let's do one more and then we'll put the earring together okay so there's one and we'll do one more so i've got another little piece of my bead stringing wire i'm going to thread on one of my crimp beads okay and i'm going to take the tail end of that wire i'm going to tuck it back down into the crimp bead and then i do want to push the crimp bead up close just to kind of close up our loop a little bit <laughs> and there we go and I actually could get a little bit closer so I'm going to use my crimper tool to help slide that bead just a little bit okay now before I crimp make sure double check that your bead stringing wire is running side by side inside there it's not crisscrossed over each other put that crimp bead in the back notch of your crimper tool and crimp down you're going to create that little macaroni shape okay take it out turn it sideways and put it in the first notch of your crimper tool and squeeze and that's just going to tidy it up make it as small as it can be okay now i'm going to come in and look at that teeny little tail i am going to trim that off so suzanne asked what size beading wire am I using? I'm using 19 strand and I'm using 0.46 for this, but honestly, there's a whole wide variety of um, sizes that are that's gonna work with your seed beads. Um, rule of thumb though, you definitely want to use the biggest bead stringing wire to fill up the most um, space in your bead, right? So this is a really good size for that, just saying. Um, so now we've got our little loop okay now we're going to turn the other end around and we're going to thread on our, our seed beads so we're going to do 10 of the pink this light pink i mean there's five we're going to do five more okay there's 10 of the light pink we're going to go to the medium pink here. There's five of those. Let's add five more. Okay. There's 10 of that medium toned pink. It is so pretty. So, so pretty. They look so pretty together too. All right, and 10 of the darker pink, and then we're gonna crimp the end. There's five. Four and five. All right, now we have all of our seed beads. 
on our strand and we're going to thread on our crimp bead and drop that down okay now coming back in with the crimper tool and I do want to pull that crimp or I'm sorry the bead stringing wire to one side as I crimp Something else, <laughs> be really mindful of your placement of your um, tool because yesterday when I was doing this, I accidentally tried to crimp too close to my seed bead and I cracked a seed bead. So you gotta be really careful. I was worried about that today because I'm so far away from the project that I was afraid that that was gonna happen. So far, so good. Knock on wood though. All right, and then to the first notch just to kind of tidy that up and make it nice and tiny look at that tiny little crimp okay so now we're going to trim off the tail and we're good to go okay so we have two strands that are ready to go and we can move our seed beads out of the way now we're done with the seed beads so now we can put together our earring so i've got two I need one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So, magic of TV. <laughs> I have 10 already ready. So, now we can put the earring together. And we are going to use a small piece of 22 gauge. I'm using German style wire for this. Use whatever's comfortable to you. If you want to use artistic wire, totally fine. Okay. We're going to create a wrapped loop and before we actually do the wrapping we're going to thread on all of our little strands here so i'm going to come in with my chain nose pliers i'm going to come down on that wire a little bit about an inch or so okay inch and a half make that bend in the wire so we've got this backward seven shape and then i'm going to come in with the round nose pliers and i want my loop to be a little bit bigger than my normal loops so if you guys watch me a lot you know that i usually make my loops down here somewhere i like to keep my loops nice and small but because we are going to um, be adding 10 strands right we need to make we need to accommodate for the room that all of those are going to take up so i'm going to come back here to the middle of my round nose pliers take that wire up and over and then roll the pliers out of the way and take the wire on over to the other side so we've got a decent sized loop here okay and we're actually going to adjust this loop even more here in just a few minutes. So before we do the wire wrapping, we want to put all of our strands on. So we're just going to take the tail end and thread it through each one of the loops on the end of our beads. And probably be easier to hold it this direction. Just sliding all of those on there. And you can hear they do kind of snap when you thread them on. Okay. So when it comes to tassels, there are so many different ways that you can create tassels. You can do this exact same design, same thought with um, any other kind of cord. You can string your seed beads onto hemp and instead of um, crimp beads, just tie little knots. So make a knot there and then tie a knot down here at the bottom. And with the hemp, you could even leave like a little tassel end if you wanted to. There's a whole lot of different ways that you can achieve a really great tassel with seed beads and different, string, different stringing materials. And they all do hang just a little bit differently. Um, the hemp is gonna hang differently than the bead stringing wire. And the bead stringing wire is gonna hang a little bit differently than, you know, putting them all on hard wire, right? So a lot of different options, play around. So there's a lot of different ways to do this. Tomorrow on Sarah Ellis Designs, I'm gonna show you guys an even different, uh, or a, <laughs> what is the wording? I'm gonna show you a different way tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> using some more of these beautiful seed beads and some beads from one of the Jesse James beads mixes. So we're gonna do something similar, just different, right? Okay, so now I'm holding that loop. It's got all of our bead stringing wire on here. 
I am holding the loop with bent chain nose pliers and I'm using my regular chain nose pliers to come in and do my wire wrapping. I'm gonna do just two or three and it doesn't matter what these look like because you're not gonna see them. I love opportunities like that so it doesn't matter <laughs> what that wire wrap looks like. Trim off the tail. All right, so now we have our little our little tassel. All right, I see some questions or something that we're talking about. Hold on, let's see. What was the question about the, hold on, I'm scrolling back, you guys, sorry. Do, 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 do. What I see, I, and I can't go all the way back, is we, as Sarah was saying, we also have crimp tubes. I wonder if they would work too. So if we're talking about in the same scenario as this, yes, they absolutely will. Absolutely will. You don't have to use crimp beads for this. You can use crimp tubes for this. Um, crimp tubes is what I normally use for almost everything. Um, but I just picked the crimp beads this time, number one, to be a little bit different, and number two, because they're just a tiny, tiny bit smaller. Okay, so we have all of our little bead strands together, and now we want to create the actual tassel for this, or the actual earring, rather, okay? So straighten out your bead stringing wire, and then one of the gorgeous beads in here is a large hole bead, right? And it's going to be the perfect way to cover up our loop, our wraps, and we can even pull just a little bit and even tuck in our bead stringing wire loops and just have our little crimp beads showing. Now they might not all be perfect, but it's so close to the metal, it's so close to this bead that nobody's gonna notice if you don't get every single one of those, right? If there's any of your bead stringing wire peeking out, it's totally okay. But I love the use of the large hole bead to hide all of that because it's gorgeous, number one. And number two, it is really functional, right? All right, so now I want to take one of these cutie patooties. Look at these little drop beads, this hot pink drop bead. And I wanna drop that down and it's gonna sit right in the top of that large hole. So it's like that large hole bead created a little nest that was just perfect for our little drop bead to sit on. And now I'm gonna create a wrapped loop and everything will be nice and secure. So I'm gonna come in with my chain nose pliers, give it a bend, coming in with the round nose pliers, and up and over roll those pliers out of the way, take that wire over to the other side, and then wire wrap. And your little drop bead might wanna pop out of place. Just sit it back down in there where it is supposed to be, okay? And now everything's nice and secure and gorgeous, might I add. <laughs> All right, so now I'm gonna come over here with my cutter tool and trim off the tail for this. And we are gonna add an ear wire and we have an earring ready to go. So really the assembly part of this is super quick to do, but the long part of this is gonna be stringing up your seed beads. And though they are not really long strands, it does take a little bit of time, but you could definitely knock this out in about 20 minutes. Um, assuming that your seed beads are behaving. <laughs> right and they're not they're not being sassy you can get all of those seed beads strung up and crimp you're going to find that there are so many crimps happening here that number one it's a really great way to practice your crimping if you're not super confident in the crimps that you create this is a good way to practice and um I had a number two, but I completely <laughs> forgot what it was. Oh, I know what it was. You'll get into a rhythm, right? Once you get it down and you start threading up all the beads, you'll get into a rhythm and it you'll work these up in no time. Um, you, What I did last night for the one that I, the single earring that I was working on so that I had a pair today when we got finished, 
I thread all of the beads first. Well, actually, let me let me rewind. I made all of the loops on 10 strands first. Then I thread on all of the seed beads and set them all down and then I came in and I crimped the ends on each one of them and to me I feel like it went a lot quicker that way than doing one at a time um, but I mean you know that's just personal you know choice there you can do this however you want to but I feel like the end result is really really good I feel like the um, the usage of that large hole bead it was like it was just meant to be right it was the perfect way to hide the um, the loops and the wire wrapping so if your wire wrapping is not super pretty all right you can just tuck it into that large hole bead and there we go I'll try these on in just a minute but I feel like we do have time if you guys want to stick around we'll put together a ring real quick using the roses because it's just so pretty why not and there are four of them in this mix right and these little roses are no stranger to Jesse James beads you'll find these in a lot of different mixes so let's do that real quick I'm gonna put on the one that I already made well actually let me just kind of break it down for you so I'm gonna use 20 gauge wire for this you can use 22 if that's what you've got but 20 gauge wire and you're gonna need about 18 inches and I have a ring mandrel to use so that I can create that size. But if you don't have a ring mandrel, that doesn't mean you can't create a ring. You just need to find something that is the size that you need to work around, right? And there's always something around. If you've got some of those great big fat um, permanent markers, those will work. Anything you can find that is this shape is gonna do just fine. So you don't have to have a ring mandrel to do this. All right, so let me pull out some of the wire, and I'm not measuring, but I do know that it takes about 18 inches. I always have, whoa, way more than I need. You should see this piece that I just cut. Okay, so what we're gonna do, we're gonna take our little rose, and we are gonna thread that on to our 20 gauge wire, and I'm gonna drop it down and find the middle of my wire, okay? When you find the middle of the wire, you can go ahead and kind of bend the wire on either side just so that you've captured that bead, right? And it's not gonna go anywhere, particularly if you're like me and you've cut an obscene amount of wire to do this. Okay, so now I wanna take my ring mandrel and I want to place this little flower on the mandrel. And if you have a mandrel then you, you want to place it on the size that you want if you want a size 7 ring you want to go to the size 8 okay so you want it to be a little bit bigger if you don't have a ring mandrel keep that in mind when you're looking for things to use to create your ring on um, one of the things that comes to mind that I have used a million times is the top of um, fingernail polish some of my fingernail polish, you know, the lid with the brush, the lids are kind of large. They make a really good size ring. Um, so just a just an idea for you. But you definitely want to go up a half a size to a size bigger than what you actually want. Okay, so now I have the wire. I have the flower sitting where I want it. And here is the wire. It's coming to the back of the mandrel. I'm going to work one piece of the wire at a time, okay? So I'm gonna take this top wire and wrap it around the front of the mandrel, okay? Back around to the back, and then back up to the front, okay? So I've gone around twice with the top strand of the wire. Now I wanna to come to the back and the bottom piece of wire <laughs> I've got to move these beads. I'm just kind of flipping them all into the into the carpet here. Now, the back piece of the wire, I want to do the same thing. I'm going to guide it around the mandrel, up around to the front, kind of going underneath that rose, okay? And then back around one more time. Make sure your wires don't cross each other and then back up to the front, okay? So when you look at it from the front, you've got one wire going one direction and one wire going the other direction, okay? Just like that. 
hold on to it, come to the back and look, you should have four strands of wire on the back and you wanna be sure those are not crisscrossing each other, okay? Okay, now, this is the part where people tend to get a little stumped. So I'm gonna try to explain this as, as easily as I can. And I'm holding everything together with my fingers, okay? I'm trying to pull everything tight because I want those wraps going around the mandrel to be nice and tight, okay? Make sure that you're underneath the rows, okay? Now, the strand that's on the bottom or the piece of wire that's on the bottom that's coming out to my right, I'm gonna wrap it up. We're going around the outside edge of the bead and up here to the top so that it's coming out to the left, okay? Now, the top piece of wire that was also going this way, we need to bring it around underneath and up to the top, okay? Now what we wanna do is we just wanna chase we want to play a game of chase with our wires, okay? We're just going to alternate. I'm going to pick up this strand, wrap around until I meet up with the strand. This, or I keep calling it a strand with that piece of wire. I'm going to trim some of this off because this is, this is insane. Okay, that might make it a little easier, okay? Now, when I meet up with the next wire, drop this wire, pick up this wire, wrap around, until you meet this guy, pick this guy up, around, until you meet, and around. Okay, so you're just kind of playing chase with your wires, and then when you get as many wraps around the base that you want, you can stop. There's no rhyme or reason. There's no set number of times to go around the base, right? Okay, but when you stop, you want to stop so that you're kind of in the same setup that you were when you started. You've got one wire, on the bottom and one wire on the top and they're both going opposite directions, okay? Now, very carefully slide off of the mandrel and you just wanna pinch all the little wires together and we're gonna work one side at a time. And I'm gonna start over here with this side that's on this wire that's on the bottom. I'm gonna take that wire, kinda bend it up a little bit and now I'm going to um, and I may need my pliers to help me with this, okay? So I'm getting those ready. I'm gonna take this wire and I'm gonna make it curve to the inside of the ring, right? You see what I've got? We're going to the inside. And then I'm just gonna pull that wire nice and tight around all the bands, okay? And then I'm going to wire wrap again. So basically what we're doing is we're just bundling all of this, the bands with our, this one side of wire. I like to wrap around about three or four times, okay? And then I want to trim off the excess. And I like to trim on either side or on the top and not on the inside just because I don't want to fill that wire up against my finger, okay? So trim that off. Now we're going to flip the ring over and we're going to repeat the exact same process with the, the other wire on the other side. So I'm gonna take that wire and bend it. You can trim it off if it's too much to work with. Trim off some of it. Make it easy for yourself. Don't make it harder for yourself, okay? Bending that wire and looping around once around all the bands. Katie says, do I have an Etsy shop? Okay, so <laughs> I do, but it is closed. I have not sold anything on Etsy in a really, really long time. But people keep asking me about it. I'm thinking maybe I should open my Etsy shop back up. I don't know. All right. Now I'm just going to wrap around again. And if you need to use your pliers, because I did get them and get them ready. If you need to use your pliers to tug on that wire and get it nice and tight, don't hesitate to do that. The tools make things easier, right? You want to make it easy. Try to make things easy. Do not try to make things hard. 
I have a tendency to do that, to make things much harder than they need to be. Okay, so there's the wire wrap on that side. Now, oh no, did you see that? <laughs> okay, I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna trim off this wire. You guys, this is why me and seed beads do not get along with each other. Look at this, yep, they're everywhere. They're in the carpet. <laughs> Oh man. Okay, so this is what I've got, but I need to put this back on the mandrel, okay, and wiggle it down <laughs> to the size that I want. And the wire is going to give a little bit, okay? There's the bands right along the back, and I'm wiggling on here to make sure that I <laughs> it is funny it's funny because you guys know about me and the seed beads and that just serves me right that was my that was my desserts for being sassy <laughs> all right so I just wiggled it down and that's going to help bring the bands back into that nice round shape if they kind of got bent out of shape as you were wire wrapping um, if you feel like you need to hit this with a hammer right to harden it a little bit you absolutely can but you don't have to it's not it's not an absolute necessary thing to do you can also if you want to come in and kind of squeeze these wires that are going around the bead to kind of create whatever shape that you want to with those wires they do make a nice little bundle though right around the base of your bead you can use any bead for this but i feel like it's really pretty with the um with the roses in particular they're just they're just so pretty okay part of the reason just one more thing part of the reason that i included this in today's project even though there are not any seed beads in this project i did want to mention that as you're wrapping around, right, you wrap around once or twice the base of your bead. Before you do that final wrap, if you wanted to, you could add seed beads to your wire and wrap it around so that you've got seed beads surrounding your bead. Okay, so just keep that in mind. I didn't do it for the project um, just because me and seed beads clearly have a love-hate relationship, um, but it is a possibility. So once you get used to doing it with just the wire, then you can start adding things to it, right? You can add seed beads to it. You can even add four millimeter beads to it, three millimeter beads to it if you want to get really crazy and creative with it. So there you go. We've made little rings today. And yeah, definitely. I saw um, Catherine, no, it wasn't Catherine, sorry. Somebody said, it was Rita. Rita said, do you go one size larger when you start? Yes, that's the most important part, is you wanna go one size larger than what you need um, just because the wrapping is gonna take up some space underneath and the wrapping on the sides is gonna take up some space. So it's actually going to um, make your ring one size smaller with the addition of all the wraps. So yes, you wanna start one size bigger or at least a half size bigger and then you'll get the exact size that you want. Oh, Rosanna says, I usually add a little green one on each side of the rose to make it look like leaves. That is such a good idea. I love that. I love that. You can get crazy creative once you get that one part down, you know, then you're good to go. All right. I'm going to turn you guys around and we will part ways for today. It feels like it's gone by really fast, but we did two projects. That's pretty awesome. All right, so I'm gonna show you guys the earrings. These are so flirty and fun and definitely go with my sassy today. <laughs> so there are our earrings. Aren't they cool? I just think they're really, really neat and add a lot of movement. I love the ombre effect with the seed beads. I think that that's really, really pretty and you can do that with any of the seed beads that you get from Jesse James Speed, you can create the same effect. So if you wanted blue or you wanted green or whatever, you can still do this. The purples, the purples will look amazing. And there is a cute little um, Design Element Speed mix that probably matches everyone, right? So, awesome. All right, you guys, Whew. what a day. <laughs> The seed beads are out to get me. So I guess that's what I'm going to do here in just a second. I'm going to clean up this big mess that I made and 
then get on with the rest of my day. Just a side note, you guys, I am working on some uh, folders. You may have noticed there are some folders on the Jesse James Speeds Facebook page where I'm kind of dropping in some customer creations. All of the beautiful things that you guys are creating, I'm trying to group things. Um, so if you're interested in having one of your creations added to the albums that I'm creating on Facebook for the Jesse James Speeds page, please post those in the secret stash or post those over on the Magical Mystery Bead Box. Um, group. I That's actually where I am at the moment. I'm in the middle of the Magical Mystery Bead Box group photos going through and putting some photos together for an album for Jesse James Speeds. Now, why would you want to do this? Well, first and foremost, because it's fun. It's neat to look at everybody's awesome, amazing creations. But it is also a place where other people are landing, right? There are people out there who are stopping by that maybe they don't know Jesse James Speeds yet. Maybe they don't know you yet. And they're opening up the albums and I've got everybody's name. This piece was created by. So you're getting your recognition and you're showing off your beautiful talents. And you guys, there is so much talent that we have in our groups. It's amazing. So bravo to you guys. Keep posting your pictures of your Jesse James Speeds creations because we love them. We're using them. We're putting them out there, getting your work seen by people, right? I mean, it's all about sharing the love and that's what we're doing. So don't forget to share, right? Don't forget to share your creations. Inspire somebody. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to do a uh, 500 bead pickup now. <laughs> All right, guys, that is enough for me. I better quit while I'm ahead. So you guys have a wonderful, wonderful rest of the day. Don't forget, you can catch me tomorrow on Sarah Ellis Designs if you would like to see another tassel project using some seed beads and beautiful beads from Jesse James Beads Mixes. And don't forget to check the weekly deals. I usually say that and I completely forgot about it today. Check the weekly deals. They're good until Monday um, when they change. And uh, they may or may not include some seed beads and some bead mixes. So you might want to check that out if you haven't already. And otherwise, I will see you on Monday for Monday Maker at 7 p.m. Enjoy your weekend, guys. Bye.